Today we're going to learn how to work with colors that we see in flesh. Uh, you know, close up of my hand right here. Uh, if you look really close, uh, hopefully you see that it has a lot of different colors in it. It doesn't have just one color, um, one flesh tone to kind of fill it in. And that's a mistake that a lot of people make when they first start drawing flesh tones is they will often look through all of their pastels or all their tools and they'll try to find one color to fill in everything and then go from there. Today I'm going to show you how to use a variety of colors in order to build an overall sense of the color that is on the hand, uh, but one that will hopefully look more realistic and make your figure drawings look more alive. So let me just kind of show you the palette that I'm working with here. Uh, I have a bunch of pastels that I'll be using today, and what you'll see here is, you know, um, it might be a little hard to see with the quality of light, but this is kind of a peach color, and a lot of people, you know, if they're looking at a flesh tone that would be kind of peach, they might pick out something that is peach toned and attempt to shade in. Uh, whatever they're drawing using that peach color. Or they might go and find other shades of tan or brown in order to kind of use a one, one color for everything. I'm going to set these aside. I'm not even using them today. What you notice here, hopefully, are a variety of colors that uh, are pure, very saturated. They're really colorful. We have bright reds, we have yellows, we have greens and blues. I also have white and gray, and I will be using some vine charcoal today. However, in a very limited amount. I'm going to stick mainly with the colors that you see in front of me, and I'm going to end up with something that will resemble very closely the flesh tone of my hand. So I'm going to zoom back here to my page. Um, it will take a while for me to do my entire hand, so I'm just going to demonstrate one finger. <laughs> Uh, or two, and first thing you want to do is just kind of map things out. So what I'm doing is I'm just kind of mapping out where my pointer finger is. That's where it would go, and now I'm going to try to find the angle to my thumb. I'm drawing them longer when, than they would be. Okay, all right. And I'm not worried about finding the perfect contour of my finger quite yet. Right now, I'm more concerned with getting the angles correct because I'm going to figure out the contours and they're going to be fine. You can't figure out everything at the same time, so don't try to figure out every single measurement that you're trying to do all at once because your brain can't do all of that and use hand eye coordination at the same time. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's a little more like this. And it's okay to correct yourself big deal. It's getting over the ego, um, allowing yourself to admit, ooh, I miscalculated that, and fixing it before you get an hour into the drawing and you can't really fix things. Okay, so let's see. I'm just going to kind of give you, I'm going to start to draw the other finger, but I'm not really going to draw that in this demo. I'm just putting it there so that it's a little less scary to look at my entire hand. Um, and the angle that I have is slightly different with the camera. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is, and I've slightly enlarged my finger a little bit too. Okay, good. I have a very crooked finger. The things you start noticing about yourself when you get up close. It's really fun and scary all at once. So now I'm going to erase a little bit. Now that I finally discovered that my finger is a little crooked, and I'm just going to find some milestones before moving on with the color. Um, just so you know, I'm drawing with the charcoal so that you can see it very well, uh, but if it were me, I might start with charcoal, but I would want to make sure that I wasn't pressing too hard and I, I was definitely not using compressed charcoal. So I want to make sure that all of this stuff is very easily erasable kind of moving forward and working on this. Uh, so, and just to kind of cheat, see, not bad, not bad at all. Okay, so, now, what I'm going to do, and this looks weird. I mean, I just put my hand over where I was drawing, 
and to me it looked a little strange. I wasn't feeling like I was actually drawing my hand, and that's because there's a lot of stuff that's not in here yet. Remember that anytime you're shading or you have something that isn't shaded in yet, it doesn't quite look like what it's supposed to because the shadows make things look smaller and the highlights make things look closer. So, first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go under here with the cool undertones. I'm going to find some cool undertones. Uh, I'm using warm blue and cool blue. Remember that the cool blue is a little closer to purple, the warm blue is a little bit more greenish. So I am imagining that these are my veins. Anywhere, and you do see blue. If, if, sometimes you will see blues and violets under your hand even. Um, what I'm doing, and I'm just going to grab a little bit of violet too, because you can definitely get that in there. What I'm doing is I'm really trying to put it where I see it. And if you remember from learning about color in general, uh, some of the low lights, some of those darker areas, uh, have bluish tints to them. And so I'm trying to put the blue anywhere where I see it. Um, I am not really feeling a lot of the warmer blue, but I'm gonna I'm gonna put it around in a few areas so you can see what I'm doing. Um, I'm putting it in some of the areas where I might notice a cooler undertone, but maybe it's warmer in appearance. I'm gonna take my violet now and go anywhere where I might see some violet happening, taking shape. And don't be scared of this. Uh, don't feel like, ooh, this is looking strange. I don't, I don't trust that this will look the way it should. Just go with it. You want to arrive at the color. It's not something that you start with. Color is arrived at. It's something that takes a while to develop. But it's completely worth it. Just try it this way one time, or a couple of times, and I promise you will get the hang of this eventually. Okay. So now I kind of have that taken care of, and for my next step, I am going to add some of the warmer colors. So I'm going to add some of the reds. This is a cooler red, and this is a warmer red. Cool red tends to go more towards the violet, and the warmer red tends to go a little bit more towards an orange. In this case, I just have a yellow to show you. So what I'm going to do is I am going to layer some of the reds where I'm seeing them. I'm also going to take a moment, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this very gingerly, I'm going to take a moment to kind of blend some of what's already going on, kind of strategically. Okay, so I am blending it. I don't want to blend it all the way in. Remember, the goal is not to have one color that you're shading in everything. The goal is to arrive at the color, to come at it slowly, and to let it develop in a natural way. So now I've kind of strategically done that, and now I'm putting some of the red in other places, and it's creating, the red's going there, but in some cases it's creating a little bit of a brownish highlight. Things are beginning to take shape. And I'm going to say, you know, if you look at lots of different artists who work this way, um, you're going to notice that they all use different sets of colors, um, but they'll work with the warm and the cool, pushing it along to kind of arrive at some of these realizations. Okay, don't get impatient. Um, add things a little at a time. Don't add things too quickly. Resist the temptation to add white. You're probably looking at your hand if you're drawing with me right now and thinking, what is going on? I want to lighten this or darken this or dull down what's happening. But don't do that quite yet. Give yourself a chance to see how this works. A lot of the magic is going to happen as soon as I add the yellow. Um, yellow, in my case, it's going to be some magic. Um, it might also work with different varying shades of golden colors or even some oranges. Orange can often do that depending on what skin tone we're looking at. Um, I would be really careful to uh, just, you know, pull in these colors. A lot of people want to pull in the peaches or the browns. They want to just see it already. But remember, just be patient. You want these colors to blend on the surface. 
So now, um, what I'm starting to do is I'm starting to put these golden colors strategically, only where I'm really seeing them. It takes a while to train your eye to see where you might be seeing some of these colors. Uh, but as you go, it's going to happen. Not everywhere, just places where you see it. Okay. And you can always pull it back in another direction. So for example, I feel like maybe I used a little too much yellow here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back in with the violet and the violet and yellow are complementary, and they're gonna make tannish colors. They're going to work together and do some of that for me. So remember that a lot of this works quite well in that way. Um, I'm now going to go in and I'm going to try to add in some shadows and shading in a few places. I'm going to do it very slowly. I'm actually pulling in a little bit of green because it's going to hopefully mix in with some of the reds, make some tannish or brownish colors and it's going to help me arrive at flesh tone just a little bit better. And you want to strategically blend. Remember, when you get far away from what you're doing, it will hopefully look a little bit more realistic. Uh, and you can really kind of go from there and make it develop on the page. I'm going to go in and do some details now. Um, I think you got to be really careful if you're going to bring in black. I'm going to bring in some blues and reds. I think a really good challenge for yourself if you're going to practice this stuff is maybe to not let yourself use black uh, at all. I'm going to use it just a tad to darken some of these colors, but I'm never going to use it alone. I'm always going to use it in conjunction with other colors. And now I'm going to go in at the very end and I'm going to add some whites. Not a ton, not going too crazy. I'm just using it to highlight some of the areas where I need them. So the cool thing about adding the whites to these areas is that they're immediately going to, in my case, they're bringing it a little bit closer to what the flesh colors will look like. But notice how I'm thinking about the angle, and I'm not going in every area. Some places I want them to really still look like shadows.
And you can always go back and forth, adding in more reds, more blues, more greens, lights and shadows. After a while, you can kind of bring out fingernails, different areas of the hand that might look a little bit more realistic. It takes time. It does not happen immediately, but the more you really pay attention to color, um, the more it's going to start looking realistic, the more it's going to start looking like the actual thing that you're drawing. I hope this gave you kind of a start to working with color, and of course I can go on for a while drawing this, but hopefully it gives you somewhat of a foundation so that you can really get started uh, working with finding flesh tones in a realistic way. Uh, and, you know, it takes some trial and error, but eventually, hopefully you get to a point where you feel a little bit more confident with it. Thanks.